ultimate action hero. Top agent for a secret organization. Hello, everybody out there. Hey, uh, this is Lee Thompson Young. And um, today is my first day back on the set of Rizzoli and I. But tonight, his last television appearance airs on TNT, one that was filmed before he tragically took his own life last year. Over the years, Disney Channel original programming has undergone transformations to adapt to evolving times. Yet certain classic shows remain unparalleled. One such Hallmark series was the acclaimed The Famous Jet Jackson, marking the channel's 1997 rebranding initiative aimed at entertaining families and rivaling Nickelodeon. Lee Thompson Young, portraying the titular character, led this edgy action-adventure series, depicting a teenage superstar yearning for a normal life while navigating the complexities of being a secret agent. Young's portrayal of a wise-cracking and highly intelligent teen captivated audiences, but tragically, the actor's own life took a somber turn. Despite his promising trajectory as a child star poised for household recognition, Young fell short of attaining those heights, ultimately succumbing to a premature and self-inflicted end. His untimely death unveiled the challenging realities of childhood fame. Lee Thompson Young's solitary passing in his apartment stands as an indescribable tragedy. As the lead in Disney's action series, the famous Jet Jackson, Young undoubtedly commanded a global fan base numbering in the millions. However, in his final moments, the actor likely did not experience the echoes of adoring young fans chanting his name. Instead, he faced a profound silence. Now nearly a year since that silence descended, the family of the Columbia-born actor is breaking their own silence to share insights into the circumstances surrounding his tragic demise. Lee Thompson Young. Well, he would just kind of seek out wherever he could get an audience and uh, he would perform. He would tell stories, he would do poetry, he would do speeches. In 1994, Velma Love dedicated her time to nurturing her youngest child, Lee, who exhibited early signs of being a natural-born entertainer. According to Love, Lee actively sought out audiences and engaged in various forms of performance, such as storytelling, poetry, and speeches, a passion he pursued with exceptional dedication. He would just kind of seek out wherever he could get an audience, Love said, and he would perform. He would tell stories. He would do poetry. He would do speeches. For Young, this interest went beyond a typical childhood phase. He expressed a desire to have business cards made to showcase his multifaceted talents. Love recalled his proposed card content, Lee Thompson Young, actor, poems, stories, and speeches. She accommodated his request, and Young would distribute these cards enthusiastically wherever they went, be it at church, school, or any other setting. The next thing he asked was if he could have some business cards made, Love remembered. And I said, what will they say? And he said, Lee Thompson Young, actor, poems, stories, and speeches. And I had the cards made, and he would just hand them out to whomever, wherever. We'd go to church, at school, wherever. I remember being in a meeting when I, when I got the phone call about the Big Mac, and I jumped up. <laughs> you know? I was like, oh my God, this is it. Born in Columbia, Young, at the age of 12, convinced his mother to relocate to New York, where he swiftly secured representation from a talent agent. Love vividly recalled the pivotal moment when news of his casting in a Big Mac commercial reached her during a meeting, eliciting an ecstatic response as she recognized it as a significant breakthrough for his burgeoning career. I remember being in a meeting when I got the phone call about the Big Mac and I jumped up, Love said. I was like, oh my God, this is it, this is it. One of his goals in the time frame that he set and me being the planner, I was just like, I taught him that. While Lee Thompson Young's family took immense pride in his achievements, they couldn't help but perceive his success as a collective triumph. As my little brother accomplished his goals within the time frame he set, I, being the planner, couldn't help but think, I taught him that, shared Young's sister Tamu Lewis, reflecting on the familial sense of accomplishment. Young's professional journey led him to secure roles in primetime television, movies, and commercials. Ultimately, he attained the starring position in The Famous Jet Jackson. However, amidst his successes, there were aspects beyond his anticipation or control. In his late teenage years, he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and I observed some periods of sadness that stabilized quickly, recounted Love, his mother. Some aspects of a person's inner life remain elusive. Young's sister Lewis also noted his occasional calls expressing feelings of sadness. Despite these instances, his recovery was swift, and he consistently displayed a protective concern for his family. 
He would sometimes call me and say he was feeling a little sad again, Lewis said. It was always a quick recovery and I too feel that he was always concerned about us. He was always protective of us. Different than kind of the normal ups and downs that we have during the day. The depressive episodes usually last about two weeks. And with that, we see depressed mood, hopelessness, sadness. According to Dr. Ashley Jones, a psychiatrist at the University of South Carolina, Young's bipolar disorder diagnosis is not uncommon, affecting 2.6% of American adults. Dr. Jones highlighted the distinctive nature of the disorder, characterized by depressive episodes lasting approximately two weeks, featuring symptoms such as depression, hopelessness, and sadness, followed by manic episodes marked by euphoria, grandiosity, and heightened self-esteem. It's very different than the normal ups and downs we have during the day, Jones said. The depressive episodes last about two weeks, and with that, we see depression, hopelessness, sadness. Then there's a mania. They could be euphoric or grandiose with high self-esteem. Through a combination of medication and therapy, Lee Thompson Young continued to advance in his career, securing progressively significant roles. By the age of 29, he had become a regular presence on the popular television show Rizzoli and Isles, portraying Detective Barry Frost. However, in August 2013, a significant shift occurred. After learning that Lee was discovered deceased in his apartment due to a self-inflicted gunshot wound, we were, naturally, deeply shocked, expressed love. It's a question everyone contemplates, and regrettably, we don't have those answers. There's no definitive way to ascertain. Now, almost a year following the profound silence that ensued, Young's family has chosen to share insights into his life and tragic demise. They have recently established the Lee Thompson Young Foundation with the aim of destigmatizing mental illness. Reflecting on the impact of Lee Thompson Young's experience with mental illness, his sister Tamu Lewis remarked, I do feel that having someone like Lee impacted by it and making headlines sort of makes it acceptable. People now understand that Lee wasn't the sole individual facing such challenges. Witnessing all that he achieved in his 29 years, more than some accomplish in a lifetime, despite battling a mental illness, is both inspiring and tragic. Following Young's character's demise in a car accident during the season 5 premiere of Rizzoli and Isles, the show paid a heartfelt tribute to Detective Frost on Tuesday night. This episode stands as Young's final appearance on television. Columbia, Young's cherished hometown, remains dedicated to honoring one of its brightest stars even in death. Let's delve into the life of the talented individual who, unfortunately, could not realize his full potential. Born on February 1, 1984, in Columbia, South Carolina, to parents Velma Love and Tommy Scott Young, Lee Thompson Young experienced the challenge of his parents' divorce at the age of eight. Following the separation, he resided with his mother, Velma, who observed his natural flair for entertainment. Displaying a love for performing, Young engaged in acting, poetry, speeches, and storytelling. At the age of 10, he secured a role as Martin Luther King in a local play titled A Night of Stars and Dreams, a pivotal moment that clarified his career aspirations. Believing in her son's unique talent, Velma supported his ambitions. At the age of 12, Young approached his mother with the idea of creating business cards, proudly proclaiming himself as Lee Thompson Young, actor, poems, stories, and speeches. Eager to share his talents, he actively sought out audiences, showcasing his abilities wherever possible. Recognizing his potential, Velma, moved by her son's passion, agreed to relocate to New York City to nurture his budding career. Within a year of the move, he secured representation from a talent agency, marking a significant milestone. Shortly thereafter, Young landed his inaugural commercial with McDonald's, a moment that elicited excitement and pride from his family. His sister, a supportive presence behind the scenes, shared in the pride and belief that the Young family held for Lee Thompson Young. Despite the challenges he faced, his family stood united in their support of his aspirations. Lee Thompson Young's career trajectory took a transformative turn when he secured a pivotal commercial for Robitussin, and it was during this advertisement that television producer Fracaswell Hyman took notice. Hyman, who had been working on a TV show concept titled The Famous Jet Jackson, saw in Young the ideal lead actor for his upcoming project. He said, I didn't know who he was, but I was like, oh my God, he's absolutely perfect. He was just what I had in mind for Jet. The show was conceptualized as a spin-off from the 90s series Ghost Rider, with Hyman envisioning the character Jamal having his own show. 
Recognizing Young's talent, Hyman chose him as the lead for the famous Jet Jackson, which became Disney Channel's flagship TV show, marking their foray into competition with Nickelodeon. The series experienced immediate success, rapidly growing its fan base each year. Despite being a Disney Channel production, the famous Jet Jackson offered substantive content addressing societal issues, including the experience of being black in America. An episode of particular note depicted Young's character, Jet Jackson, facing wrongful arrest by the police. The narrative highlighted the stark reality that despite societal advancements, young black men in communities were still statistically more likely to encounter law enforcement-related challenges than the glamour associated with success. The show therefore engaged with important social issues while maintaining its entertainment value. The renowned television series The Famous Jet Jackson premiered on October 20, 1998. Filmed in Ontario, Canada, the show centered around the titular character, a young TV action hero and spy in a fictional series within the show named Silverstone. Despite possessing intelligence, charm, fearlessness, and calculated prowess, Jet Jackson longs for a normal life. Successfully relocating his show from Hollywood to his hometown of Wilst, North Carolina, Jet resides with his father, Sheriff Wood Jackson, and great-grandmother Miss Coretta. Initially communicating with his mother through video calls, she later joins him. As the narrative progresses into the third season, Jet faces challenges balancing life as a high schooler and a TV star. Accompanied by his best friend JB, Crush Kayla, and Cubby, a special effects wizard, Jet's character served as a pioneer in broadening the representation of young black men on screen. As Disney's flagship original series, the famous Jet Jackson was groundbreaking as the first show on the channel to feature a majority African-American cast. Disney executives recognizing the need for diversity University made inclusion mandatory. In the late 90s, the famous Jet Jackson competed with other African-American casts on sitcoms such as Keaton, Nicole, and My Cousin Skeeter. While there were other African-American-centric shows, the action-adventure genre for kids was notably absent. Remarkably, the show never experienced a decline in ratings. Instead, its popularity continued to grow, earning Lee Thompson Young multiple award nominations. Despite its success, the show faced an industry rule imposed by Disney that mandated cancellation after 65 episodes, ostensibly due to budget constraints. Although this rule would be later amended, the famous Jet Jackson concluded its run in 2001. Furthermore, Lee Thompson Young's mother began noticing changes in his behavior, prompting them to seek medical attention. In his late teens, Young received a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Despite this challenge, he remained committed to his work, actively pursuing treatment through therapy and medication. Continuously engaged in his acting career, Young defied the narrative of a former child star struggling to find subsequent success. Maintaining a steady pace, he appeared in multiple films over the years, including notable roles in Friday Night Lights, 2004, Aquila and the Bee, 2006 and The Hills Have Eyes Two Inches, 2007. Throughout the next decade, Young consistently worked, making appearances in television shows such as Lincoln Heights, Smallville, and multiple episodes of Scrubs. Hello, hello everybody out there. Hey, uh, this is Lee Thompson Young, and um, today is my first day back on the set of Rizzoli and Isles. Beautiful sunny Los Angeles, and um, Gonna go in and uh, get ready for another fun day on the set. So come on, let's go. In 2010, he secured another significant opportunity on the new TV show, Rizzoli and Isles, playing the role of Detective Barry Frost and becoming a main character in a major network TV series once again. With a flourishing career, Young shared glimpses of his life on set, portraying a positive and enjoyable working environment, particularly in videos showcasing the camaraderie on the Rizzoli and Isles set. Life appeared to be thriving for Lee Thompson Young, both professionally and personally. Off the beaten path, beautiful town, drove through it, just on the outskirts of it right now. Lakeview Memory Gardens. And um, it's a video about Lee Thompson Young. YouTuber Scott on tape embarked on a visit to Clover, South Carolina, where Lee Thompson Young is laid to rest. In his video, Scott shared his impressions of the journey, describing Clover as a beautiful town that, while slightly off the beaten path, is easily accessible. The destination was Lakeview Memory Gardens, and the purpose of the video was to pay tribute to Lee Thompson Young. 
Acknowledging that Lee Thompson Young's name might not be universally recognized, Scott highlighted Young's prominence as a significant figure on the Disney Channel, particularly as the lead in the famous Jet Jackson. Scott, though not a viewer of the show, remembered Young's appearances in Rizzoli and Isles, and personally, from the TV series Scrubs, where Young portrayed Derek, a surgical intern, in a few episodes during the eighth season. Expressing shock and reflection upon Young's untimely passing on August 19, 2013, Scott emphasized the unpredictability of personal struggles despite external success. Young had failed to report to work on Rizzoli and Isles, prompting a well-being check that tragically revealed his self-inflicted gunshot wound. Scott acknowledged that Young battled bipolar disorder and depression, highlighting the importance of recognizing the unseen challenges individuals may face. Scott then took viewers through the small cemetery, sharing that locating Young's grave proved challenging due to the absence of a precise marker on platforms like Find a Grave. Relying on available pictures, Scott aimed to locate and discuss Lee Thompson Young's final resting place, intending to share more insights about the late actor. Continuing his commentary, Scott on tape shared more insights about Lee Thompson Young's talent and career, highlighting lesser-known aspects such as the Disney movie adaptation of the famous Jet Jackson and the limited three-season run of the TV series. He pointed out the Disney policy, at least at the time, of canceling shows after reaching 65 episodes, a practice he wasn't certain about continuing in the present. Scott also mentioned the notable guest appearances on the famous Jet Jackson, citing figures like Britney Spears, Rachel McAdams, Hayden Christensen, Destiny's Child, and Eartha Kitt. While acknowledging the absence of an exact location pin for Young's grave, he expressed confidence in finding it during his exploration of the cemetery, reflecting on Young's diverse roles, including the horror movie sequel, The Hills Have Eyes 2, Scott emphasized the actor's versatility and the widespread recognition Young garnered for his performances, especially in Scrubs. He acknowledged that viewers might primarily know Young from the famous Jet Jackson and took a moment to appreciate the enjoyable nature of the show. Scott then shared details about Young's early start in acting, playing Martin Luther King Jr. in a play at the age of 10, moving to New York City at 12, and successfully auditioning for the famous Jet Jackson. With a career that spanned three seasons and included numerous credits, Young established himself as a successful working actor at a young age. Here's Lee Thompson Young. And you can see symbol for acting right there. Ewo Fideo Adesanya. The video then transitioned to Scott finding and showcasing Lee Thompson Young's grave, noting its location in the faith section near a mausoleum. He pointed out the symbol for acting on the tombstone and shared Young's birth and passing dates. Scott also observed an ongoing funeral nearby, remarking on the frequent presence of flowers on graves in small towns, indicative of close-knit families paying regular visits. Scott clarified the tradition of leaving a rock on graves, attributing it to Jewish customs and emphasizing its recurrence in his cemetery videos. Continuing his reflections, Scott on tape shared a personal practice of leaving rocks on graves, a tradition he adopted as a young teen as a symbol of respect. He acknowledged the longevity of rocks compared to flowers, which can wither and blow away. Scott also explained how landscaping practices, like mowing, necessitate the removal or repositioning of items on graves, further noting that Jewish cemeteries often feature rocks. Transitioning back to Lee Thompson Young, Scott acknowledged Young's notable fame from the famous Jet Jackson, dispelling the notion that Young's career took a downturn typical of some child stars. He emphasized that Young maintained a steady and successful career, even securing a supporting role in the significant series Rizzoli and Isles. Recognizing that he couldn't speak to Young's personal struggles, Scott highlighted the importance of the Lee Thompson Young Foundation, set up by the family to raise awareness about mental illness. Scott addressed the unpredictability of the entertainment industry, noting that while some child stars face challenges finding work, Young's career trajectory remained positive. He stressed the tragic nature of Young's passing at the age of 29, a vibrant, attractive, and talented individual who was silently grappling with internal struggles. Scott urged viewers to be attentive and supportive to those they perceive as struggling, acknowledging that reaching out may not guarantee success, but is a crucial effort worth making. It was a somber reflection on the profound impact of mental health challenges, especially in the context of a young life cut short. 
Continuing his discussion, Scott on tape pondered whether Lee Thompson Young's co-workers were aware of his struggles with mental health. He recalled an episode of Rizzoli and Isles dedicated to the character's death, which in essence served as a tribute to Young. Scott acknowledged that he had watched a couple of episodes of the show and recognized Young from his role in Scrubs. Reflecting on his experiences in Los Angeles and encountering a billboard for Rizzoli and Isles, he decided to check out the series and appreciated Young's performances. Providing practical guidance for those interested in visiting Lee Thompson Young's grave, Scott suggested entering the cemetery through either entrance and navigating towards the circular area where the cemetery is located. He pointed out key landmarks such as the lake, the new member garden sign, and a brick wall. Scott apologized for any omissions in his tour, but highlighted the small size of the cemetery, with the crypt and pond being the primary structures on the property. Encouraging viewers to explore Young's work, particularly the famous Jet Jackson and Scrubs, Scott expressed his fondness for the latter, recalling Young's significant role in narrating an episode, a departure from the usual narration by the character J.D. Fondly reminiscing about the show's humor and memorable lines, Scott acknowledged the wealth of Young's contributions across various projects, including The Hills Have Eyes Too. As he concluded the video, Scott paid respects to Lee Thompson Young, emphasizing the profound impact of his passing at such a young age. He expressed admiration for Young's talent and encouraged viewers to explore his diverse body of work. The video ended with a heartfelt farewell. I've uh, been on The Hills Have Eyes Too, which was, uh, we filmed in Africa, it was a, a lot of fun. Uh, I'm right now working on ABC on the new season of Scrubs. I'm a new intern on the show. Before his untimely passing, Lee Thompson Young demonstrated a vibrant and altruistic personality, engaging in various charitable endeavors and pursuing positive contributions to society. In an interview with Devin Guzzi on Eddie Magic TV, Lee Thompson Young shared insights into his recent projects and philanthropic efforts. Guzzi, the interviewer, began by acknowledging their previous collaboration four years ago in the movie Aquila and the Bee, and inquired about Young's subsequent endeavors. Young responded by highlighting his involvement in The Hills Have Eyes 2, a film shot in Africa, and his role as a new intern on the ABC series Scrubs. He expressed enthusiasm for the comedic content of the show, describing it as enjoyable and funny. Additionally, Young mentioned his appearances on The Terminator, The Sarah Connor Chronicles, and Smallville, showcasing his continued commitment to acting. Anything, you know, that I can do to stay on a good, positive path and, and do things that I can be proud of. Guzzi shifted the conversation towards Young's activities beyond acting, prompting him to discuss his approach to life. Young emphasized his focus on positivity, personal enjoyment, and engagement in positive actions. He highlighted his participation in charity events, specifically mentioning the Rain Charity Fundraiser for supporting victims of R, S, A, and incest. So far, you can look it up, they have a website, Libraries for Africa, and uh, that's something that I've been getting involved with more and more and always looking for opportunities, you know, whenever there's something positive going on. The interviewer further explored Young's charitable endeavors by asking about other causes he supported. Young disclosed his involvement with a friend's charity named Libraries in Africa, dedicated to building libraries in Ghana. Expressing his commitment to positive initiatives, Young mentioned his increasing engagement with such causes and the gratification derived from contributing to meaningful projects. Guzzi then delved into Young's journey into acting, asking about the inspiration behind his career choice. Young recounted a pivotal moment in his youth when he participated in a play called A Night of Stars and Dreams. In that production, he portrayed Martin Luther King Jr. during a segment about the greatest dreamers of all time. The profound impact of this experience led Young to realize his passion for captivating audiences on stage, shaping his career aspirations from a very young age. Through this interview, Lee Thompson Young's dedication to both his craft and making a positive impact on the world shines through, reflecting a multifaceted individual with a genuine commitment to philanthropy and the arts. In an interview with Devin Guzzi on Eddie Magic TV, Lee Thompson Young offered valuable insights for aspiring actors and shared his perspectives on the event they were attending. Guzzi asked Young about advice for upcoming actors aspiring to achieve success similar to his own. Young expressed humility, acknowledging that he continues to learn every day and sees room for personal growth. He then shared wisdom attributed to Denzel Washington, suggesting that aspiring actors consider obtaining a degree in drama from college. Young emphasized the importance of living life, gaining experiences, and studying the craft, drawing inspiration from the work of accomplished actors. 
Transitioning to the event they were attending, Guzzi inquired about Young's impressions. Young expressed admiration for the event's organization, praising the diverse auction items, including a signed Brett Favre jersey and posters from the HBO show Entourage. At the Oscars, I would be suited and booted with nothing but, you know, straight up Versace expensive formal wear. But, you know, let's keep our fingers crossed on that. He commended the event's purpose and overall quality. Guzzi shifted the conversation to Young's fashion choices, highlighting his shoes and hat. Young attributed his style to a blend of casual comfort and class, expressing the desire to don a Versace suit at the Oscars in the future. Continuing the discussion about inspirations, Guzzi asked if Denzel Washington was the sole influence. Young expanded on his admiration for various actors, citing Terrence Howard's dedication in Hustle and & Flow and Will Smith's versatile career trajectory. He appreciated Smith's evolution from music and comedy Comedy to becoming a powerful dramatic actor, inspiring Young to believe in expanding his own skill set. In response, Guzzi complimented Young's consistency and expressed anticipation for his potential future appearance at the Oscars. The news of Lee Thompson Young's passing deeply saddened many, as he was widely regarded as a beautiful person both inside and out. In the aftermath of his death, there was an overwhelming outpouring of grief, and not a single negative word was spoken about him. It became evident that Young's amiable on-screen persona closely mirrored his real-life character. The revelation of his possible side left people hoping it wasn't true, as it would imply that Young felt profoundly isolated and lacked the support he needed during his troubled times. Dying alone in his apartment was considered an immeasurable tragedy, especially given his status as the star of Disney's The Famous Jet Jackson, where he likely had millions of devoted fans worldwide who held cherished memories of his performances. The silence Young may have experienced in his final moments stands in stark contrast to the potential adoration he could have received from devoted fans. His decision to take his own life leaves the rest of us grappling with questions about potential signs and the possibility of preventive measures. While definitive answers may remain elusive, the tragedy serves as a poignant reminder for society to take better care of one another. Genuine inquiries about well-being, when posed to friends or loved ones, should be more than mere pleasantries. Encouraging open communication and providing support are crucial steps in fostering mental health awareness. In the face of personal struggles, it's important for individuals to seek help without hesitation. Lee Thompson Young's untimely death at the age of 29 leaves behind a poignant reminder of the importance of compassion and understanding. May he rest in peace.